Okay, sorry about that. I've got two videos. Now I gotta split. I can't splice them. You know what? Even better. I got these two videos together. I'm, they're separate, and I need to get them together. If anybody knows any good free, definitely free, good video production software that I could use to basically not have to split two videos at once, I'd be greatly appreciative of someone to tell me. Um, anything would be helpful. I really would like to find something useful. I'm tired of using this quick cam one and just be pushing to go and that's it. But I want to be able to splice some stuff and move some stuff around and maybe do some cool videos. So if anybody knows anything, please send me an email. LP, oh no, that's not the email. LMPJR007 at gmail.com. Just send me an email, something you might know. Hook a brother up. Come on, just come on, let's help out. Let's help out. All right. For all you people who are waiting for the important thing, the how much money this whole little process on the card side was going to cost. All right. That quotes for two sizes and two different amounts. And I want to stick with small amounts, you know, as a test, because, you know, we don't know how this is going to really work out. So if I can get 250 hanging cards for 192.50, that's the base price. The card thickness, 30 millimeters, 30 millimeters, like I said. Um, Double-sided, full color. That costs 250 extra. Some people don't want that, but I think two color is definitely worth it. I mean, four color is definitely worth it, both sides. And for four color, for people who don't know, because I am talking kind of printing jargon, four color means full color. There are four colors. There's It's C-M-Y-K. Cyan, magenta, cyan, magenta, yellow, black. K. Yeah, black is a K. Don't ask me why, but I don't know. So that's what they call it. Um, let me see. Variable data. Is $45. I'm assuming that's the scratch off part. Oh no, I'm sorry. Variable data, that's actually the numbers. The random numbers we're going to place into there. Um, it has variable data, random, that's, well, that was 45 bucks for, for the data. And the scratch off panel, which surprised me it's this expensive, but it is what it is. The scratch off panel is 100 bucks. Okay. It's 100 bucks. Um, turnaround time is 5 to 10 days. We'll get a proof that's a PDF. The subtotal for the 250 is 340 bucks. So that's a little bit. Where's the calculator? I can tell you exactly. 340. 240. Divided by 250 equals 136 per card. Okay, not the greatest price. Not getting me that excited. That's a little more than what I wanted to pay. I wanted to pay, you know, a dollar or less. So. That's a 250. 500. The base price is 295. You pay five bucks for the double-sided printing. See, double price printing is double for the 500. Um, the variable data, 45 bucks for that. 110 for the scratch of this. You know, 250 more, probably 10 bucks more. I don't understand that. For a whopping cost of four, 455 bucks. You divide that by the 500. 91 cents each. And that's for 500. That's for a small trial. I'm not sure it's going to work out. Let's see how it works out. Kind of scenario. Here's the funny part. I'm looking around for all different <laughs> things like this and stuff like that. I found a website that would do them for 10,000. And the 10,000 they would do, it came out to be nine cents a piece just to make them. All right. They do, of course, and 10000 was the smallest amount they did, so you can figure out what they were doing. Now, if, if I was going through distributors, and if, big if, if I was going to do that route, I would do the 10000 I mean, the 10000 for $0.09, cents was how much? I forgot exactly how much money it was. 900 bucks. Well, it's really more than that. But it's like nine, nine, ten, whatever. But still, less than a thousand dollars, you get ten thousand. You know, dude, nine hundred. Even if you sold them, yeah, nine hundred divided by two fifty. Let's say you say the store is direct. You gotta sell three hundred and sixty to break even. Three hundred and sixty. I think you're gonna sell three hundred and sixty to break even. Well, sorry, that's not correct. Let's say let's still say let's say you make a dollar fifty on each one you sell. Let's be honest. Let's say you make a dollar fifty. Yeah, whatever. You gotta sell six hundred to break even. Six hundred to break even. Now, at the beginning, I wouldn't try this because a I don't want to go into distributors because I don't think the cut's gonna be the great way I want it. Two, it kind of restricts me. 
what to do. I'd rather go direct to stores and get them really used to buying direct from me. Then eventually, we move it over to distributor setup. Also, I would like to build a rack with it. I'm planning to build an actual rack because this is great. This is great. Got the hook. It's already there. You can put it in. Boom. Reset. And done. But not everybody does that. And not every store has that. And not every store wants to do that. Some people are lazy. And you know who I'm talking about. Some people are extremely lazy and don't even want to do that little. So what I'm going to be doing is looking at fixtures from fixture companies to find where I can put these little hanging pieces up. I'm talking small. We're talking something that'll fit on the counter, maybe a foot wide, maybe, you know, a foot and a half tall. So we can do maybe three deep of these. Well, six. Three on top, three on the bottom, like that. A little sign on top that you can swipe out. You know, our store carries blah, blah, blah. Our store carries blah, blah, blah. This store supports blah, blah, blah. Something that we can put on there that we can give the stores as, hey, you know, flip a rack, buy a rack. You buy a, you buy the full the rack full of these, buy a full rack, you get the actual rack for free. Something like that. You know, that's, that's what we're looking at. That's what I think is the next stage of this. So, I mean, the printing side is pretty, it's pretty easy. That's the easy part. That's very simple. That's very easy to take care of. The hard part that I definitely got into is the actual database side, which I think will be, if done right, well, if done right, it's a great source of income. And now here's the problem that really upsets me. I came up with this, well, let me phrase it. I didn't come up with this idea. I'm stealing somebody else's idea, but I'm modifying it to work for us. But, it, you know, but I've been talking about doing something like this for years. And a lot of people know I've been talking about it for years and years and years and years and years. I've mentioned this several times on several websites online, and no one's done this. No one's even attempted to do this. And now that I'm looking at this and looking at how easy this is done, I'm like, really, this is this is all I had to do? This is it? This could have been done years ago by companies. We could have been in stores years ago. But, you know, I'm kind of glad. I'm kind of glad. I'm kind of glad, you know, a lot of PDF sellers didn't do this. I'm kind of glad they didn't think about doing this. I'm kind of glad they didn't hook this up this way. I'm glad. Because I'm going to do it, and I'm going to test it out. And I'm going to do that. So, I'm going to see how it works out. If it sucks, it sucks. No big deal. It's only money. I burn money on silly things like comic books and bubble gum and strippers. So, it's no big deal. But, you know, it's just one of the things that irks me. It's like, here's a great business opportunity that, that basically fell in my lap because I paid attention to somebody's blog. And, you know, apparently I was thinking the same direction. I got this card before and I was thinking how we can do this. But, he basically made it for me real simple. This is how you can do it. This is how you can be innovative. And that's, I think that's another problem with industry. There's so many of us who are naturally innovative and have a lot of brains and have a lot of great ideas. But we don't work together. I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. I think we need to get, and I use we as in role-playing game company. I don't mean just third-party Paizo publishers or whatever. I think we as an industry really need to focus on being a collective force of doing stuff. Case in point, look at the look at the video game industry. Those guys usually kind of work as a team. They kind of, I mean, yeah, they got everybody got their own game and stuff like that. But they kind of promote the whole concept of gaming as being a good thing. We kind of just play it off as this. I mean, great, I mean, great example. The video that Grim did about RPG Net. I'm like, you know, and it's like, really, this is this is what we do. This is what we do. This is how people see us. I mean, come on. I mean, I've done asinine things. I'm no, I'm no innocent in this. But come on, we can't keep going like this. We really can't. You know, I'm a grown guy. I'm 40, going on 41. We can't keep doing the stuff we were doing in the 80s. We can't make, more importantly, we can't make bad-looking products and act like, oh, this is brilliant, this is brilliant stuff. Stop it. In this day and age, there's enough good technology, enough good people involved in the industry that we can do stuff that looks better. We can make better looking stuff. And it, and it should be better. Everything we put out should be look so professional that people when they grab it go, oh, wow, this is great stuff. Oh, wow, this is, I'm very impressed. That's how everything we should do. Everything we should do should look like that. Everything we should do should look at the same level Paizo's putting out. I'll just put it out there. It should be as good as Paizo's look. I try doing that. That's one of my strong points. I know that. I go out of my way to make sure it's going to look great. And I think if you focus on at least that part, the other parts naturally fall there. The look is important. Us looking professional is important. 
that's, don't cut corners. Don't cut. I mean, God, I saw a print on demand book recently, and it was. I mean, it was it was a print on demand nightmare. The book was crooked. It was cut crooked. It cut off part of their head on the logo. And it's like, oh my god! And you looked at it, it was just a mess. It was just a mess. And then as well as this book, it looked great. And I mean, it's like, why would you release a book with a cut on its crooked, the cover scuffed up? Uh, you know, these are things that people are gonna see your company and go, oh, oh and just toss it because it's, it doesn't look right. We've got to raise the we've got to raise the bar. We've got to raise the bar. We're all here. We need to be here. We really need to be here, but let's get to here. Let's all get to here. Let's you know, and I think it all comes down to a lot of couple of issues. One being money. We don't have we, none of us have a lot of money. We you know, we I do okay. I'm not complaining. I'm not I'm not turning down that money. But at the same time, we should be thinking how to make more money for not just ourselves. But for the industry. Because the more money we generate, the healthier the industry is. And this is an easy piece that can go right in the industry. I, I, I still don't I'm, Digital paper, I don't know. I don't know what I would call this. Game card, something. Whatever it is. Whatever this thing is, I think that's the connection that we as publishers and we as creators need to do to get retailers on board for what we're doing. And I think once, once a few retailers... Notice, okay, it's a good seller. More people might get involved. But there will be some people who will never be involved because they're always going to be fearful that we're going to steal their customers. Well, we're not. We're trying to get their customers to come out to their store and get something new because that's the, that's the, that's the piece. Anybody who goes in the store isn't going to the store just to go in the store. They're looking to see what's the new cool thing that's out. And if we can provide them new cool things on a weekly basis that's inexpensive, that they can make a good ratio profit on it, I mean the retailers, and the fans can enjoy it, and they can get home, they can download it, or they can be in the store and download the product right there. That's a win, win, win. We got to think about how we're gonna do this and make it better in the long run. That's that's all I'm saying. Just just something to think about. All right, I think I'm done on my soapbox acting crazy. Um, what other things are important? Oh, this this <laughs> this week talking to JP. Who had the audacity to rickroll me in our corporate meeting? I had forgotten about that. Um, I sent him a little. I sent him a. Li- I sent him a list. Well, I sent him a whole thing of spells that I thought I'd like to do for Neo Exodus. And the spells, there's it's 52 pages of spells. I sent him 52 pages of spells. And I'm like, hey, dude, 50 pages of spells is not a lot of spells. And he's up there telling me. That's a lot of spells. I'm like, 52 pages? That's like nothing. That, that's nothing. That's barely a book. And we're talking, that's just a spell. No feats or anything. That's just spells. So now he's like, well, we got to do this. You can't you can't put this in the core book. And I'm like, you got to put it in the core book. And he's like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm like, look, you got to put it in the core book. And then he goes, look, this should be an additional spell book. This You've already got a ton of spells in the main book. You're going to just over people on spells. I'm like, is there a limit on spells? Is there a limit on spells? I don't know. I don't know. Just something to think about. Just something to think about. Um, oh, yes. And this goes out to uh, Stephen over at Right Publishing. Don't blame me for these videos. You know, it's like crack, man. The first hit's free. Now you're hooked. Now you're going to have to do these videos forever. That's just the way it goes. That's, that's it. Sorry. You tried it out. You know you liked it. Because it's fun. You get to talk to people. You get to interact. You get to see your expression. Because typing is one thing. But when you can see me thrashing around and see the retardedness, you know, around my room. God, my room's a mess. You can see when I, you know, when I can grab a book and go, bam! What are you doing? Look at Master Effects book. Or I can just reach down and something grab something crazy. Bam! I'm running a fast company. Or, can I reach it? Can I reach it? Bam! Old school comic books just hanging out, doing some reading. You can't do that with type. You got video school for that. So, all right, let me get out of this thing because I'm waiting to go to breakfast and I'm hungry. And Lucas isn't screaming yet, so I guess it's a good thing. I'll talk to you all later.